On Sunday morning, I left the studio a little before 10 a.m. I bombed down into the valley. I was meeting a group of friends at the Memorial Road trailhead for the Towpath Trail. We were riding up to the Strongsville Chalet and the Cleveland Metro Parks. Unfortunately, a friend of ours passed away last winter from COVID complications, um, Bob Bobick, and his family was having a little memorial picnic, get together, celebration of life for him. And we decided we would ride up to it. We, the route was pretty simple, just the towpath trail all the way to the station road trailhead where we turned. And then you could take the Valley Parkway road and there's a trail that mirrors that uh, road. We rode the trail on the way out. It's fairly climby. Um, I think climbed about a thousand feet out of the valley to get to Strongsville, but it's kind of cool. The trail kind of winds around and stuff like that. And it's easy to ride the trail even on a Sunday like that because, you know, you're doing a lot of climbing, so you're not going that fast. Um, on the way home, we actually just kind of stuck to the parkway. Since you're doing way more descending, you could just kind of then bomb it and keep up the speed, not do the curves, not worry about the people who are walking, and then cut off a little bit of the distance since you are on your, on your way home. Anyways, it got me thinking about a lot of things heading to an event like this. And the first is just how awesome the cycling community is and how um, unique of a thing cycling itself is. Everyone I was riding up with, I pretty much know because of bikes. So, you know, and where we were heading, the person we were heading to remember, I know because of bikes. And it's just the bike community and going to a few rides and, you know, group rides. It's just such an easy entry point to get to know people. You know, even if you're someone who's on the shyer side or consider yourself an introvert or anything like that, you know, you always have, as you're riding along with someone, the bike to fall back on at least, talk about their bike, talk about your bike. You talk about the ride you're on and the scenery around you. And it's just such an interesting entry point to get to deeper conversations, you know, maybe a beer after. And I know with um, Bob Bobbick in his case, a lot of people became really close and they even went on trips together and all that kind of stuff, doing things, you know, outside of the cycling world, which is rare for a lot of us. <laughs> we prefer to just ride bikes, but you know, all that kind of thing. And just how unique that is. And um, yeah, just the relationships that I have in life because of the bike and I see it in all the other people around me and how we've just formed these relationships. So I was really just thinking about that and just thinking how um, how lucky that this is something we found, um, something he found and, you know. Anyways, when we rolled up to the chalet, it was really cool because, you know, some of the family members were like, oh, yay, the cycling guys are here, or the, you know, cycling crew, because it's guys and girls. And I had the same vibe when the group who had gone mountain biking, um, the Dirty River Bicycle Works Yeti Squad, <laughs> they met up for mountain biking, then met over. Same kind of thing when they showed up. And they're all a bunch of people that I know because of the bike as well. And we were all there, like I said, to remember Bob and hang out. Um, it's kind of interesting because if you think about it, Bob's family, I think, and him, they're more from the Cleveland area. So I actually didn't know his family. So this is the first time we were really meeting him, you know, kind of un under unfortunate circumstances. But, you know, we were there to celebrate and, you know, remember someone all together. And it's just unique that, you know, we get a roll in in that way and they get to see like, oh, these are all the cycling friends. These are the people, you know, he probably talked about in that aspect of his life. So yeah, it was really nice to share some beers, sit there and I'll eat some food and share some tears, um, some bourbon shots, lots of laughter, you know, um, cliche to say, but I, Bob Wood wanted a celebration where people were having a good time, but you know, it doesn't mean you're not uh, gonna tear up and be a little sad and miss someone as well. Uh, so hanging out and just being there also just got me thinking about in life um, how important it is, is it is just to show up sometimes. You know, you're thinking this is your Sunday, you could do whatever you want with it. And, you know, you show up to something like this or, you know, and I've never regretted it. I've never regretted um, having myself uh, get, get out of the house and be um, present. Uh, you know, it's obviously important to like family, like I said, to see, you know, all the cycling friends roll up like that. It's also, you know, important to each other. Um, you know, one of our buddies, uh, when he got there and started seeing all the photos, uh, Bob got 
extremely emotional, which he was saying he didn't, you know, expect to get that emotional. And then, you know, you're also there for your buddy, even though I had just ridden 35 miles with him, you know, we were there for him, you know, you're there for yourself to be able to remember and all that kind of thing. So it just, it just goes to show it's important to be there. It's important to show up in life. It doesn't always have to be a situation that's this heavy. Um, you know, uh, your friend's having that art show, your friend's band's playing, you know, just to, if you can show up. I know it's been obviously a rough few years on everybody and just in general as adults, you're so busy and you can't be at everything. But when you can and you're on the fence, like I said, I've never regretted. I've never regretted being there. It's never been the wrong decision. Um, you got to be there for each other and you don't do it for any reason other than it's the right thing to do. But I can say this, you know, when you show up for other people, they're also going to be more likely that there'll be people who will show up for you. You know, there's lots of good conversations there. We got to tell lots of stories. People took people who are able to speak in front of other people did a great job of, you know, giving a sense of what Bobic was like. And one thing I was just thinking about and everyone was talking about is um, he was really adventurous on the bike, um, pretty fearless. And that led to a number of accidents and going over the handlebars now has kind of become the Bobic. And now kind of forever among the group of people who know him, it'll always be called the Bobic. And it just got me thinking like, live your life in a way that when something happens, your name is used to describe it. I mean, how, how much better can that be? It doesn't have to be causing yourself physical injury, but I mean, live in a way like Bob Bobic did, that there is now something named after him amongst everyone who knew him. Anyways, um, I'm not gonna pretend that I was the closest person with Bob Bobic. He was just somebody that I always liked to see. If I was out riding and ran into him, we rode together and chatted. Um, on the group rides, we always talked. Um, definitely had a few beers and lots of laughs together. And uh, he'll really be missed. Uh, uh, rest in peace, Bobic.